morning. Jeremiah chapter number 19. <clears throat> all right, Jeremiah chapter number 19 and verse number 1. Let's all stand for just a moment as we read God's Word together. Let me get there quickly. Mess around with this microphone. All right, Jeremiah chapter number 19. Verse number one, of course, you're very familiar with chapter 18. Everybody knows about chapter 18, right? Jeremiah 18 is the potter's field and how God told Jeremiah, to, or excuse me, the potter's, uh, uh, potter's house, excuse me, how that Jeremiah was told to go down to the potter's house and he's going to teach him a few things about the potter's house and all that. And uh, he was talking about the children of Israel and how God has the power to make the children of Israel what he wants them to be. And you, of course, know the story. We may get into it a little bit later on in the message, but how that God said that, uh, or how that Jeremiah saw that the vessel was marred in the potter's hand, so he made it again another vessel that uh, that that he liked. I'm paraphrasing there, but made one that was that was fit for him, one that he liked, and 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 was shaping the way he wanted it to be. And there's a lot of good preaching found in that. But I want you to notice chapter 19, verse one. Thus saith the Lord, Go and get a potter's earthen bottle, and take of the ancients of the people, and of the ancients of the priests, and go forth unto the valley of the son of Hinnom. Now the valley of Hinnom is where uh, was a trash dump. Okay? Jesus even used, uh, and of course we don't use the Greek, we don't, the Greek doesn't clarify anything, but when the Greek word, or excuse me, when the word hell is used in the New Testament, there are some different words for it. But one of the words is Gehenna. Gehenna is where we get that word, Hinnom. Okay? And what this was, Levi, come sit down, son. All right? I've been telling y'all to use the bathroom before y'all, for service, if y'all need to go. All right? And so the word Hinnom there is where we get the word Gehenna. So Jesus uses the word Gehenna for a description of what hell is going to be like. It was a trash dump. It was a trash pile, and it was constantly on fire, and people would take it down there and throw that stuff away in that valley. Does that make sense? Now, watch this. Jeremiah is told to go down to the valley of Hinnom and take that earthen bottle, which is by the entry of the east gate, and proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee, and say, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will bring evil upon this place, the which whosoever heareth his ears shall tingle, because they have forsaken me and have estranged this place and have burned incense in it unto other gods, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and have filled this place with what? The blood of innocence. They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake, neither came it into my mind. This place of Hinnom was a place where they would offer animal, or excuse me, human sacrifices. They would offer their sons. They would burn their babies. And they would play drums to drown out the screams of the children while they were being burned alive. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall no more call, be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. Notice verse number 9. It says there, And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat every one the flesh of his friend in the siege and straightness, wherewith their enemies and they that seek their lives shall straighten them. Then shalt thou break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee. And thou shalt, and, and, uh, shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people and this city as one breaketh a potter's vessel that cannot be made whole again, and they shall bury them in Tophet till there be no place to what? Bury. I want to preach to you on the valley of broken vessels. The valley of broken vessels. And uh, we're going to study a few things out of Jeremiah, and I'm going to, we're going to take an interesting turn at the end, okay? Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be in church this morning. Help me as I try to preach this message. Lord, use it for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You can be seated. 
<clears throat> now, you know the uh, in the Old Testament, you've studied this, if you've been in church any amount of time, you've heard it preached or read or whatever, that people, or excuse me, that the children of Israel in the Old Testament, they were constantly in a cycle of sinning, going into captivity, crying out to God, being delivered, and then right back to sinning. It was this endless cycle of sin, rebellion, captivity, deliverance, and all that. Uh, before we get too harsh on the Jews, we could also say that that's a lot like our lives as well. Amen. Uh, that oftentimes we are in that same cycle. We get right with God. He delivers us. We get, oh, I'm never going to do this again. I'm never going to do that again. I'm going to stay right with God, blah, blah, blah. And then we go right back to what we were in beforehand, right? Now, notice here, Jeremiah is told, he says, I want you to take a earthen vessel, a, a, a potter's vessel. He just came from the potter's house. He said, while you're leaving the potter's house, I want you to take one of those vessels and I want you to go into this valley, this field, and I want you to break it. I want you to throw it and break it in the midst of this field, showing that I am going to break the children of Israel, their sin and their rebellion. I'm going to make them eat the flesh of their sons and daughters. I'm going to make them suffer for the sin the end that they have done. There's going to be some chastisement upon the people of Israel. And so notice here, he takes this earthen vessel and he casts it down. What was going on in this place? We already mentioned it. There was child sacrifice going on. They were killing. Look, this place was filled with the blood of what? Innocence is what it says. Remember that word, innocence. And that's not like, like I, I retain my innocence. No, that's a plural. These were innocent, S, innocence. These were infants that were being slaughtered. And the way they would do it is they would take an idol of Baal or an idol of Molech and they would uh, take them up there and they would have these idols and they would build a fire around them and those idols would be, I mean, red, glowing red. And they would take their children, and the arms would be out like this. They would take their children and place their children on these idols, in the hands of these idols, and burn their children alive. That's what was going on. And like I said, they would play drums to, to drown out the screams of these children as they were being burned alive. It's sick stuff. So in the New Testament, Jesus uses the Valley of Hinnom and, uh, and the surrounding area as a way of describing what hell's going to be like. Now you say, preacher, this is very interesting, but what does this have to do with me? How is this going to help me have, have a better Monday? Well, it may not have, help you have a better Monday, but it's interesting to know. Now watch this. We see in the Valley of Hinnom, we see this broken potter's vessel. And I think it's interesting. He says in verse number 11 that it's going to be broken as one that cannot be made what? Whole again. It cannot be made whole again. If you notice in Jeremiah chapter number 18, Jeremiah goes down to the potter's house. And God tells Jeremiah, I'm teaching you something down here at the potter's house. I'm showing you how that there are vessels that are marred and that when they're marred in the potter's hand, he breaks them down and builds them back up again. And that's a wonderful truth, isn't it? How that if we're marred in the potter's hand and if, we're, if we are not what we should be, that God can break us back down and mold us back up again. But hold on a second. Here's the problem though. Here's the problem. We're not talking about a, a, a wet piece of clay on the potter's wheel. We're talking about an earthen vessel that's already been hardened and now it's going to be taken down and it's going to be broken. So let me say this. There's a difference between wet clay and hard clay. And you better be real careful about getting too hardened against the Lord because when you get too hard against the Lord, you're no longer formable and you're no longer moldable. And it's a lot, listen, it's a lot less painful to be wet and pliable and the Lord to say, well, I'm forming you up here, but I don't exactly like the way you're coming out. So I'm just going to smash you back down again and humble you a little bit because once, as long as that's taking place, that's an easier process. But once the vessel becomes hardened, you're a lot more likely to get broken. Does that make sense? You better be real careful about getting too hardened against the Lord and hardened against the things of God because you're a lot more liable to get broken and broken beyond repair. So he takes that vessel down and he throws it into the potter's field. He throws it into this place. And this is a trash pile. This is a, a dump. 
There's several places. Some, some of the place was a, a place where it was burning and constantly on fire. Another place was just a place where there was vessels and all that kind of stuff. And notice, they take it down and there's this big trash pile of all these empty vessels. All these broken vessels. In fact, there was a whole place called the potter's field. He's fine. There was a whole place called the potter's field. All right? And they would take these vessels down and they would throw them and they would shatter now, what was that purpose for? Well, it was all these places. They would have these, potters would have these shelves up in, the, in, their, in their houses and they would put these pieces of pottery and they would try to decide whether or not they wanted to keep them or not. And once they decided that they didn't want to keep them, they would take these vessels down and they would say, we're going to take them down to the field and we're going to throw them in the potter's field. In fact, there's a prophecy about this potter's field found in Zechariah chapter number 11. Zechariah chapter number 11. Take about a look there. Look at Zechariah chapter number 11 and verse number 12. Zechariah chapter number 11 and verse number 12. Notice what it says there. Zechariah chapter number 11 and verse number 12. It says this. It says, And I said unto them, If ye think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price, what? 30 pieces of silver. Now what is that? What is that talking about? Jesus Christ. Who portrayed Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver? Judas, Judas Iscariot. So the context here is Judas Iscariot. Look at what it says in verse 13. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the who? The potter, a goodly price that I was prized out of them, and I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the what? The Lord. What is this talking about here? Well, take your Bibles, go to Matthew chapter 27. Look at Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27, we find a story. Look at Matthew chapter 27 and look there about verse number 3. Matthew 27, 3. Notice what it says, Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself, and brought again the what? The 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned, in that I have betrayed the what? Now, does that sound familiar of something? This place where they were killing innocents, this place where they were burning their children, this place where they were taking the trash piles and, and the junk and the broken vessels and all this stuff, it's called the place, they were slaying innocents there, the blood of innocence. But hold on a second. Now Judas is saying, I have betrayed the innocent blood. Notice what it says, verse 4. And they said, what is that to us? See thou what? To that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And now notice here, and the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is, is, it is the what? Price of blood. I've always wondered how the Pharisees and the chief priests and scribes and all that, how in the world they figured this stuff. I mean, the, here they are. They know Jesus is the Messiah. They know he's the Son of God. And yet they kill him anyway. And then they have the price of blood. Well, we can't put that in the treasury. That's the price of blood. That wouldn't be right. That wouldn't be good for us to do. It's amazing how religious people get when you start talking about religion. You know, that, well, we can't put that. That's the price of money. Yeah, but we just killed the Son of God. That's okay. A little side note there. Just a little nugget of truth there. It's amazing how religious people get when they start talking about certain things. They want to make sure that they're keeping all the outside clean, but nothing on the what? Inside, right? Now notice here, moving along, and they said uh, in verse number 7, and they took counsel and bought with them, what? The potter's field to bury strangers in, wherefore that field was called the field of blood 
unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value, and gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord appointed me. Now notice, here's something interesting. Jeremiah never says that. Who says it? Zechariah. But notice this is where we put emphasis on the King James Bible. It never says that Jeremiah didn't write it. It says that he what? He spoke it. He spoke that it was the potter's field. He never said it was written. So don't let anybody try to say, well, see, the Bible's wrong there. The Bible, the Bible Jeremiah never said that. Well, he might have said it. He just might not ever wrote it in the book of Jeremiah. Amen. Yeah. So watch this. Here's the truth. We're going to get out here just a touch early. You ready for this? Jeremiah is writing about this potter's field. Jesus has talked about this dump, this place where broken vessels are cast aside, forgotten by society. You're of no use. You're of no value. Uh, you're, a, you're a marred vessel. Maybe you're chipped. Maybe you're cracked. Maybe you're a, a, a pot that can't hold any moisture anymore. Maybe you're a glass that got chipped. Maybe you're a vase that was so beautiful but now it cracked. It fell over. Something happened. It's a broken vessel and it's not any good. I'm not going to waste my time going down and having it fixed. Just take it down to the potter's field and cast it outside the city. Cast it in the potter's field. Shatter it. It's no. It's not good for anything anymore. And now all of a sudden here's Judas Iscariot fulfilling prophecy by the way and he takes this blood money, the blood of innocence, the blood of an innocent man, cast it down at the feet. They take that, and instead of putting it in the treasure of the Lord, instead of buying something for the temple, instead of doing something good with it in the church, you know what they did? They went and they bought a whole field of broken vessels. Amen. Now, in case you're not getting it by now, the blood money of Jesus Christ went to buy a bunch of broken vessels. The blood money of Jesus Christ. Money that bought innocent blood was used to buy a field full of just broken, worthless, no good vessels. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that something? And you know what they used it for? They said, when we got a stranger, when we got somebody that's, in, that's not part of Israel, when we've got somebody that's not part of us, when they come in and they die, we're going to use that field to bury strangers in. Amen. You know what that field was for? That field was to accept the people that the Jews didn't want. Yeah. Mm. Amen, 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 amen. Notice it says here, it says, wherefore that field was called the field of blood. Now, I'm a stranger, and when I, got, when I got saved, I died with Christ, right? I died with Christ. So it was a death that happened. There's a resurrection that happened. There's also a death that happens. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that my life is hid with Christ in God. The day I got saved, I got buried with Christ. Amen? I got buried with Christ. And you know where I'm buried? I'm buried in a field of blood. Yeah. Amen, amen. Amen. Isn't it amazing that death is also figured as baptism and death are figured the same? How that you die and you're baptized. And you know what happens when you got saved? You got baptized in a field of blood. Amen. Notice this prophecy is fulfilled. So you know what I'm looking at? Listen. You know what I'm looking at this morning? I'm looking at a bunch of no good, low down, broken vessels. You know what's happened to you this morning? You know what's happened to you? You've been broken by the world. You've been broken by people. You've been broken by your own mistakes and failures. You've fallen. You've gotten chipped. You're cracked. The paint's worn off. And uh, maybe you used to be able to do something. You can't do it anymore. Maybe you used to be able to serve the Lord better. Maybe you used to be able to do this. And now you just feel like you're cracked and chipped and broken. And things have happened. And maybe you felt outcast. And maybe people have thrown you aside. Maybe people have stabbed you in the back. And they've taken you and they've thrown you out. And you've shattered and you're broken. And you say, not only am I broken, but look, I'm surrounded by all this trash and all this junk. And right over there, I mean, Jesus, he, I mean, look, our next door neighbors right over here, Jesus used them as a picture of hell. I mean, how great is that? How I many you want to, you know, have you ever heard somebody say, you know, that's the armpit of wherever? You know, they say, they say that a certain place is the armpit of a, I mean, imagine living in the armpit of Jerusalem. I mean, that's what this place was. And 
Jesus, when He's dying on the cross, the blood money's being used to buy a field. And that field is right there. And here's something else interesting. If you ever studied the fields in the Bible, there was also a field called the fuller's field. Do you know what a fuller was? Fuller, that was a soap maker. And fuller soap, the fuller was known to be able to take the stains out of all the garments. Isn't that interesting? Start studying the fields in the Bible. Start studying the fields in the Bible and the different types of fields. And notice, you know where this place was? This field, it was in a what? A valley. The valley of Hinnom. You say, preacher, I'm at a real low point in my life. I'm in a real... Yeah, but here's... And man, this is... I mean, this thing, you could study this thing out and keep going and going and going with it. That low point in your life, you know what the Lord did? The Lord bought that point. The Lord bought that low valley. That... You say, preacher, I'm in the valley this morning. Okay, you know what it is? You're in the valley this morning, but God bought that place. You may be in the valley, but that's still the Lord's territory. You may be in the valley this morning, but that's still a place that God purchased with the blood money. Understand, no matter where you're at in life, the Lord is leading you. Listen, sometimes He leads us through paths so dim, right? Sometimes it's the mountain, sometimes it's the valley, but understand, all those places, the Lord bought all those places. So you say, preacher, I feel broken this morning. I feel like, I feel like I've been cast aside. I feel like I'm just an outcast. I feel like I'm this, that, or the other. I understand that, and sometimes we all feel that way, and sometimes those feelings are valid. So, I mean, some, sometimes we are just broken, right? But I'd rather be broken... In the potter's field. I'd rather be broken in a place that God bought. And the Lord thought so much of a broken vessel that He decided to buy a whole field of them. Now, I don't know what world He sees in a broken vessel. But let me give you this and we'll be done. You ready? Uh, there's, uh, you could preach a whole message on the potter's I'd probably preach a whole series on the potter's house. But remember I talked about how that Wet, malleable clay, it's easier to form and mold. But something's interesting. When that vessel gets hard and they just want to take it and throw it aside, it's a lot harder to make clay out of a hard, broken vessel. But it is possible. It is possible. You know how? They take that broken vessel and they grind it to powder. Then they sprinkle some water on it and begin to mold it. And then they put it back in the lump with all the other malleable clay. And they begin to work that clay into the other clay. It's a lot harder, but it's possible. You say, preacher, I've just gotten so hard and I'm so broken and I'm so been out of shape and I'm so bitter and I'm so this and I'm so that. I understand that. But God bought a whole field of vessels like that and He didn't buy them for, without a purpose. He didn't buy them just to let them stay there. He bought them so that He could try to do something with them. And it may be harder to reform that clay and it may be harder to make something out of that clay, but He did it for a purpose. Am I making sense to everybody this morning? So this morning, every head bowed, every eye closed, Dan's going to come back to the piano. I know it wasn't a long message this morning. I know it wasn't a great, profound truth. But I want to give you just a moment to pray this morning. And if you need to come and pray, why don't you just slip out of your seat and say, Preacher, I've just, I'm broken. I feel myself getting hardened. I feel myself getting bitter. I feel myself chipping away. Why don't you let the potter do something this morning with you? He said, Preacher, I'm just a broken vessel. I know, but the potter thought so much of broken vessels that he bought a whole field of them. If you need to come this morning, I'm going to give you just a moment to come. If anybody needs to pray.